Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We'll be getting started. Join us. Hi. Hey, Marcelo. Yep. Rotated, hold on. Yeah. So for everyone who's uh, joining us and watching us live, uh, please feel free to comment where you're watching us from or what year you graduated. We'll be getting started shortly. Just trying to give more people a chance to uh, to log on and, uh, and see this conversation. So yeah, in the meantime, let us know in the comments, graduation year year or if you're planning on attending UF um, and where you're joining us from. I'm actually in Arlington, Virginia. My name is Monica Alvarez Cunningham. And uh, yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to today's uh, alumni charla. My name is Monica Alvarez Cunningham, and I am on the board of directors for the UF Association of Hispanic Alumni. Uh, I am in charge of alumni engagement, and one of the uh, things that we are doing regularly is having these alumni charlas, uh, trying to have these on a monthly basis just to catch up with alumni, see what they've been up to, how they're supporting alumni efforts, and just to really uh, stress why it's great to stay connected to, to the UF alumni network. So with that said, uh, I am a graduate of, the, of UF from 2007. I majored in telecommunications, although the major title has changed now. And I also got my MBA from UF uh, last year in 2022. And tonight I have Marcelo Cortes joining me. So Marcelo, can you let us know a little bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, what you studied at UF when you graduated? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, it's good. I'm glad to be here. A little nervous, but we've discuss this already. Um, so I'm uh, born in Havana, Cuba. Um, moved up, we immigrated to Miami in 1969, about the age of, I was two. Lived in Miami all, all my life till we were in, until I transferred, went to UF. Was at UF from 84 to 88. Um, have a, was in uh, pre-construction, building construction, and once I grad, I left Florida. I actually had my my construction management degree. I wound up getting my final my bachelor's from uh, Florida International. But all my under every all the classes I took were at Florida. Um, things things happen. So, um, then I uh, was in Miami from the eighty eight to two thousand twelve when I got the opportunity. I moved to Nashville, and I've been here now for about 10 years um, really in, enjoy living up in, in Tennessee you get a chance to see all the different types of weather as opposed to uh, coming from living in Miami in South Florida so I, I miss it sometimes but you know kind of like it up here too yeah I can really being in Virginia and I see that someone is commenting um, that they're in Silver Spring Maryland so uh, yeah, we're all getting quite the variety of weather right now. It doesn't seem to be consistent um, anywhere. So yeah. um, thank you for that brief introduction. Yeah, so so um, what, I guess, what have you been doing professionally since graduating? Uh, well, well, I graduated and I've basically been in, in one aspect of the construction industry ever since then. I uh, uh, started off as an estimator, which is kind of an entry level, and uh, um, worked on that for a bit. Uh, at one point, I became a licensed general contractor in the, uh, with the state of Florida. Uh, it was also a licensed roofing contractor, just been in the, been in the construction industry uh, ever since. Um, and then now that I'm here in, in Nashville, I am a project manager with uh, Dowell Construction, um, mid, uh, small to mid-sized general contractor specializing in, in projects in Middle Tennessee, mostly hospitality, a lot of restaurants, um, 
But with that said, right now, the two projects I'm mostly involved with are a high school that we're in the process of completing and a church. So oh. but, very different. <laughs> yeah, very, very different from our, from what really is our company's wheelhouse, which is restaurants, but. Well, thank you for that. So uh, let's, let's take a little trip down memory lane uh -oh. and, you know, the years that were, you were on campus, can you talk about, you know, what your experience was like? Um, you know, what kinds of activities were you involved in or were you just focused on studying? Mm -hmm. You know, what kinds of things were you up to when you were on campus? I mean, uh, one of the, the things when I was in at Florida, I was part of a fraternity. Um, I was from uh, Phi Kappa Tau. I pledged my sophomore year, second, uh, sophomore year. Yeah. And uh, that really has been, I've had lifelong bond with, with those guys, with with my brothers, um, we and as part of being in a fraternity, there's always a lot of obviously the social, but there's also a lot of the charity work that we did, and and it got you involved kind of a lot with the community itself when we were there, when I was there. Um, I don't think you know had too much with with uh, kind of student organizations. I had most of the time with with my fraternity and also working. It, 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 it kind of took up a lot of my time. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like, you know, the organizations available on campus have changed so yeah. much, you know, throughout the years. So, um, so that makes sense. Now, you know, after you graduated and, you know, you transitioned from student to now alumni uh, or to the alumni group, what was it that drew you to stay connected with the university um, after graduation? Um, I, I think that uh, one of the things that drew me was was trying to get. I, I was so proud of of being a Gator, which, which is an interesting story. With, and and I'll get to it in a little bit why I come up with that term. Um, and also, you know, with colleges, everyone sees schools as being a lot. You know, you went to Florida. It's, foot, it's all football, sports, and and, and things. And I kind of wanted to. See what I could do to say, hey, it's not, we're not just, we are sports, yes, but we are a lot, that's a lot more, this university has a lot more to offer than just what's on the, on the playing field. Even though the playing field is important and it's what kind of draws people, draws alumni back, but it kind of expanded to say, hey, you know, there's a lot of other things to do. And I, I kind of wanted, at that point in my life, it was like the mid-90s, I really kind of wanted to seek something to give back. To the community, and then I saw the opportunity to give back to UF, and I was like, "That's no, I was a no-brainer to just become involved." And and I did. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, so how did you become involved? Can you talk about that? I think it, was, it boiled down to um, the Gator Club of Miami was having a kind of a board uh, orientation meeting, and I was, I I just I went and. I think the first year I was a member, and the second year I was already kind of on, on board as an off, you know, as one of the officers, one of the directors, and just kind of stemmed from there. Um, was the kind of the VP of athletics, which was kind of reviewing parties and things like that, which was great because it got you to meet people, to meet other Gators, and like you know, if you were having a viewing party, you were kind of the point of contact. Everybody came in, and then you got a chance to. You know, my pulpit at those meetings a lot was, hey, we're also doing, we've got uh, an outreach event coming up this week that, you know, we're having a professor from Florida come in. Uh, in two weeks, we're cleaning, you know, cleaning a beach on Biscayne Bay. Other things that we were doing beyond just, hey, sitting around, getting together and watching football. So it, it just kind of snowballed from there. And um, kind of in a way, I, I also kind of got exposed to other alumni clubs in the area and realized that we that they weren't as they were more like sports oriented and, and I kind of wanted to give the members there more of a very uh, hey that we're more than that than than just sports so, and it builds true to today I mean I see it with some of the clubs they am now currently involved with the Music City Gator Club um, Again, because of 
couple of years ago, was it? Uh, uh, when I was, when I cycled off as past president, it was like two years ago. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> you never done. I'm not, it I'm, pulls you back not, in. <laughs> it, pull, it pulls you back in yeah. to, to coin, the, coin the, the movie phrase. Yeah. So, um, you know, earlier you mentioned that you th it's interesting that you say you're a proud gator. Do you want to touch upon that? Yes. Yeah. And um, so what I noticed is in, when I was in Miami and even here, I get exposed to, we do a lot of things with, uh, try to involve other organizations like, you know, whatever, the university out east here, I can't remember their name for the life of me, the, the, the yellow, the yellow, orange, whatever. Tennessee? Yeah, yeah whatever, that, <laughs> that one. Uh, and just involved with the different alumni groups. And if you ask someone else, and I think someone's mentioned this before, and it's actually true, hey, where'd you go to school? They'll tell me, oh, I went to the University of Tennessee, or uh, I went to Vanderbilt. But if you ask a Gator, and I use that term, where if I ask you where to go to school, your response is, oh, I went to Florida. No, you're more than likely going to say, no, I'm a Gator. It, 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 it's it's it, it's a different bond, I guess. It, it's more identifiable. It's same on Tennessee, and and I noticed that with our within our the Gator Nation, which really truly is everywhere, how strong that set that I feel we have more of a tie back to our university than other schools, and I think that exemplifies it. Hey, I'm a Gator. Yeah, I totally agree with that. <laughs> uh, recently, I you know we have a new intern where I work, and he's out in Seattle. Seattle and we were just chatting and then it came up like you know tell me a little bit about yourself and it was I'm a gator oh I'm a gator go gators you know so um which is it's really funny and then you know you look at states like I think I don't know if Tennessee has it, but I know Texas has a Florida gators license plate option so when I lived in Texas I was able to have my gator tag mm -hmm. I know there's some states that let you have a gator tag yeah I think uh and I know now, uh, Tennessee has one, Alabama has one, uh, I believe Georgia has one. I've seen a, a few in this, er in this area, but we do get, it's kind of bragging rights. Right? So I, I don't believe Tennessee has one in Florida. So no, there you they go. don't. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, thanks for, for that. And then I totally agree with your earlier point about how, yes, sports drive so much of, like, you know, the marketing, but really the university just, it, it is a great university. I mean, I got both of my degrees from there and I, I have seen a value for myself, you know, being a graduate. Um, so I guess, why do you think it's important for anyone who graduates from UF to try to, I guess, stay connected and whether it's, you know, giving back or, you know, just for their own, like, you know, benefit, I guess. Like, why do you think it's important for people to stay connected? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, even from, um, you know, initially, like, let's say a purely social, social aspect uh, with, with the Gator Club names, uh, you know, the Gator Club network with the Association of Hispanic, you know, the, the affinity groups, et cetera. Um, it, it, it just expands. First, it could expand, you know, professionally. Obviously, there's the professional opportunities. There's the, you know, the personal opportunities. Uh, and it's great to, to go, and especially if you, if, if you, like yourself, like, you know, you move out of the state, and, you know, when you go somewhere, and there's a bunch of people that can identify with, hey, so having spent time in Gainesville. And then by extension, it becomes, oh, yeah, and I'm from Miami, or I'm from Tampa. And it, it, it's just a connect, uh, the connection. Of that it, it, it's important to say because there is a, just a support group you know professionally you come in it's a, a network you know and and also being active is an icebreaker too like uh, you know you're trying to complete a business deal with someone and then they wind up knowing you're a gator it, it helps it helps break that ice yeah absolutely you know i i graduated again in 2007 and i definitely have found that staying connected and networking has really opened up opportunities for me. Um, so that in turn, you know, makes me want to give back to the university and, and continue to, you know, yeah. give back. Um, so to make, to make sure that, I mean, we're stewards, we're, you know, we kind of got to take that and say, Hey, we need to get the word out about our, our school. 
you know, I mean, we're all extremely proud of being a Gator. And I want everyone to know that, hey, I, I make no, no bones about it. He, even here, I mean, it, it's friends. Everyone knows, knows that I'm a Gator. I'm pretty out there with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as far as the UFAHA, um, I know that it was pretty much in like its early days when you joined it. Can you talk about, you know, what it was like back then? Yeah, it was, it was very early days. I, I think it, they, they coincided with, uh, it was my term as president of the uh, Gator Club of Miami. And when Erica Rios was at UF as, as, and kind of the decision was made that they wanted to pursue that. And I was the liaison with having the, you know, the Gator Club Miami was, at that point, it was the largest concentration of Gators outside of Gainesville. And just, not the resources, but just the people, the person, just the members uh, to get the word out. And, we, and I remember the early, early <laughs> planning meetings up at Ocean Bank with uh, Ignacio Arreya, Juan Luis Porro, and, and all these guys. And the idea for that first event that was held at at Jumbo Island at that at that time, which was like, I think, uh, was it right before a Miami game or something? And and, um, and just being in the early stages of seeing it, it develop when, when the, uh, the idea came of having the Gator Guayarera Guateque, uh, GTG, as we would call it. And, and just working, and I remember working alongside Ignacio and Juan Luis and the passion that Ignacio had for, for that. It just it resonated. And obviously, to the sense, I mean, this was early 2000s that we're, they're still plugging and chugging, and it's, it's bigger. I haven't been able to attend in the last couple of years that I've been up here, um, but uh, it was an infancy that just some of the ideas and, and just guys putting it together and it, it, it coming out to where it is right now, establishing the scholarships and everything. It was great. And then I tried yeah. to, once I actually came off the board of the Gator Club in Miami, I was on the board of of the AHA for a bit too. So actually, I think I moved up here. Now, I think I may have been one of the first remote board members when uh, when that happened. That's awesome. It's setting the uh, you know stage for the rest of us. Um, you know, and talking about GGG, it's really exciting because it is returning to Jungle Island this year. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, so I'm glad you uh, mentioned that. Tickets are already on sale, and it is such a fantastic opportunity because, yes, you know, we do have the scholarships, and then we have the Gran Caiman, and it's just such a great opportunity to, yes, you know, really um, showcase all these exceptional and just super impressive Gator alumni it's also just a really fun time to go and eat and drink and dance, um, you know, with fellow Gators. And, and it's just such a great opportunity. So, you know, really want to urge people to go check out um, GGG. Like I said, tickets are on sale and, and really uh, just take advantage of this fun opportunity for anyone who's in South Florida or anyone who wants to travel yeah. to South yeah. Florida. For, yeah. Uh, yeah. It is something that definitely to travel to. If, if I mean, well, and the boot, you get to spend, the, you know, the weekend in South Florida, which isn't, is it, is it a bad uh, to boot, but it is, it was a great, it's, it's a great event. It's a great way to reconnect with people. And I, I know that when I was involved, a lot of that was the, the signature event that people, you know, like, you know, you'd barely, you'd, you'd almost just barely ended, you know, turn the lights off on the, di on, the, on, the, on, the on the hall because this one was over and they're like, well, when's the next one? That planning that far in advance for for everyone to attend. So yeah, I always love chatting with people after GGG and just you know hearing about their experience and how much fun. My mom uh, went in my place last year because I was actually uh, one month postpartum, uh -huh. so I was really bummed about not being able to go. But my mom had such a fun time. She actually ran into people she knew. She didn't go to UF, but she ran into people she knew who were Gators and. You know, everyone was just so excited to be there and, you know, just so proud to to be able to celebrate, you know, just all the achievements of our Hispanic alumni, right. um, which is which is cool because, you know, I think living in Miami, we take for granted, um, you know, how many like alumni exist outside of Miami that are Hispanic and 
all the cool things that we're doing living outside of Miami. So, um, you know, that's why I love the AHA because we have members all over the place and we're able to really highlight people like yourself and, you know, others on the board who, who aren't in Miami. Uh, um, but yeah, so. Uh, I, I, even to some extent, I believe that the event itself is, is a significant, is, um, is kind of a sign of achievement. Like, hey, this is, this is what, what we do, you know, this is where we're at. I mean, and at one point I say, I remember it was the largest event that was, because it was totally put together by volunteer, by members. It, mm -hmm. Very little staff involvement from UFAA, which I think was by design, which was great because I think it, it just heightened the passion that you had for the event and, and, and the association. Yeah, it's, it's nice that we get to put that, you know, focusito that's ours yeah. on the event. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the other event that we also have is the Hispanic Alumni Weekend in Gainesville, which is also, you know, a super fun time. Um, so to any alumni who are interested mm -hmm. in that one, I also recommend that one. It's always around a football game. So, you know, you get to go back and have a great time, watch some football, and then other activities that we do around that weekend. So, you know, those are obviously two um, bigger events, uh, you know, that alumni can leverage to, like, stay connected and, and really just take advantage of being alumni. But I mean, what are some of the easier ways that you would think, you know, people can stay connected? Like, what would you recommend? I, I think just uh, kind of keeping up to, with what the university's doing and they're doing, you know, like when you get your, the, the Gator, you know, your alumni magazines and, and just following up, following with what the university is doing, especially academically, uh, follow their, you know, their, their Facebook, their social media, all those things. But to see just, it, it kind of tells you how much the university really does beyond, you know, sports. Um, it gives you the ability to kind of brag a little bit, you know, when you tell them, hey, we're a top five public university. Yep. You know, and, and, and I know that kind of recently, uh, university's making my degree look much better. Same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and one of the involvements that, that we are in um, with, like, uh, the Music City with the Gator Clubs is we give out scholarships. And we'll have a scholarship review committee. And, when you know, you'll get applications from students that are, go that are attending Florida from here looking for, you know, the scholarship. And you just see that just the... the the class, I would say the class, but just the quality of the students that are applying. I mean, you could even notice it from one year to the next. You're like, wow, wow. I mean, and these are striving to, you know, to attend the university. And especially if you're away, like myself, and, and you see that there's kids, you know, that aren't legacies that decided, hey, I want to go to Florida. And, you know, I live out in Jackson, Tennessee or somewhere, but, hey, Florida's where I kind of want to go. Uh, that our university brings that attention somewhere where you figure, you know, Jackson, Tennessee, or some or some small city in Tennessee or anywhere that kids want to still go to Florida. It's great. Yeah, it is super uh, amazing to know that there is that uh, desire outside of Florida. I know that recently one of the uh, assistant directors of admissions of the UF MBA program was out here in the DC area, you know, talking mm -hmm. to prospective students, which is so cool to me that, you know, like obviously growing up in Florida, some of us just know we want to be Gators, but beyond Florida, yeah, it's cool to see students have that interest. And, and yeah, to your point, uh, but it just, yeah, the students applying to the scholarships are super impressive. UF AHA sponsors some scholarships which is honestly another really great way for alumni to give back. I mean, you have the opportunity to contribute towards those um, endowments. And, uh, you know, in addition to being able to attend the events, if you just really want to give back, you know, we do have those opportunities. Like you said, it's not just sports. It's all these yeah. other things that UF does to, you know, um, support students and, and things that, like you said, the uh, alumni groups are really working to, to support students and alumni and, as well so yeah and 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 then one of the other events that i was on that i look forward to and actually some of the experience that i sorry we're an amber over <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh international international gator day uh i think that's a, a great we make experience because mm -hmm. you'll meet people there that oh i'm not into sports so i don't go to 
to your viewing parties or I don't do this, but this event I come to. And uh, you realize that, hey, that, that's another way to give back. And this way you're also giving back not just to the university, but also to your local community. And, and, and kind of, you know, getting your name out there and seeing people watch go, hey, man, look, there's a bunch of, a bunch of people dressed in orange and blue doing something and, and enjoying it. And like I said, giving back to your local community along with the university. Yeah, one year when I was with the Southern California Gator Club, we did the Revlon uh, women's like 5K. And it was just so cool to have us all out there in our Gator gear, you know, like walking for such a great cause. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah, we love the sports. But sometimes sports, you know, leave a little to be desired. So but, it's good to know that we have other things to brag about. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, to your point, now that you mentioned that, it did actually bring back a memory. Uh, a few years ago, I would do take part in the uh, Music City Marathon. Well, a half marathon. I'm just half crazy, not, not I mean, completely crazy. I've done a half. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, when, when there's that split that it's, you know, thir you know, half marathon this way, and, you know, you're 13, 11 something miles in, and there's this marathon this way, you go, man, they got another 15 miles of yeah. But <laughs> we had, the Music City Gator Club had uh, volunteer at, uh, volunteer to to assist they were they were handing medals when you crossed the finish line mm. so it was really really cool and, and that when i'm coming across the finish line and there's a bunch of music city gators with all the orange and blue and the hats and i'm coming with my gator uh hat and having one of them you know having one of my fellow members at that time hand me a medal. it was cool it was it was cool yeah it was good it was visual and yeah, I love it, and you know, it really is great to be a Florida Gator. I mean, there, is, <laughs> there, there, there is nothing greater than to be a Florida Gator. Yep, I totally agree. Um, well, that's all the time that we had for today. So I just want to ask: Was there anything else that I didn't ask you about that you really wanted to mention? Anything you know I, you're thinking? I think it, 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 to me, what I'd like to see, is, my point is, I, I've gotten so much out of being involved post-graduation with the, uh, you know, the Gator Clubs, with the AHA, just with the university, going back to Emerson. And so, I, you know, I kind of want, if you haven't or you haven't done, try it. it, it it's great. I'd really like to see more, more of us involved in those organizations and maybe leadership positions and stuff and, and, and being more ambassadors for our, our school which we love so much. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. Well, thank you so much, Marcelo. Really oh, appreciate yeah. your time. It was so fun talking to you. And, oh, thank you. Yeah, really this appreciate was, your time. Oh, it was great. Thank you so much. All right, go Gators. Go Gators. Bye. Bye.